The church will call people a heretic for years before they finally recognize them as a saint. If we need the church's approval to be validated, to be seen, a lot of the world will sit unrecognized. People whom God sees as perfect and loves unconditionally will often be sitting in the dark in tears waiting for approval. You don't need to wait for approval. Why? Because you've already got approval. As you are for who you are, because, beloved, that is what you deserve. Would it be okay if I were to tell you that I am afraid someday? So I call you up and you call me down. Would it be okay? Well, hello and welcome to the Freed Hearts Podcast. Thanks for joining us. My name is Robert Cottrell and I'm here as always with Susan Cottrell. Hi there. Hi. <laughs> Again, folks, connect with us at freedhearts.org, especially. If you're looking for answers to all the crap you've heard from the anti-gay church and their Christian friends, resources, and if you're looking for inclusive, affirming community, we've got all that. It's all on the website. And also, you do some life coaching. Yes. Uh, Very limited amount. um, But if you're interested in a life coaching session, a spiritual life coaching, life coaching, coaching session, whatever that is, with Susan, uh, it's amazingly powerful. Just uh, email us at podcast at freedhearts.org, or there's a little link on the on the freedhearts.org website where you can submit it there as well, and we will get back to you on that. So, yeah. Great. Cool. You're Perfect. really good at that, by the way. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, a friend of yours emailed you, and we're kind of on a theme last week and this week. So, last week we talked about that you don't need to defend yourself, and you don't need to defend what you believe. Why? Because you are approved, you're all good as you are. You don't need anyone's approval. And that's what we're going to talk about today. A friend of yours emailed you about a longtime friend that she grew up with who now, with her pastor husband, runs a church. And of course, it must be with her husband because, after (laughs) all, she's from a denomination that doesn't recognize women as having agency or independent intrinsic value or worthwhile thinking. So she is second string. So anyway. Yeah, I'm glad you threw that in there. That's really <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, just listen to women preach all the time. Folks, oh, my God. Really. So your friend had emailed this longtime friend asking if her family, including her gay son, would still be fully embraced in their longtime church. And the friend wrote this. So let me back up because there's, there's some confusion there. So she, your friend wrote her longtime friend. Right. And then her longtime friend wrote, wrote her back yes. and said this, yes. dear whoever it was, I would do everything to encourage your children to follow the Lord and seek him always. I'm sorry <laughs> for the heartache you have gone through, but don't throw out the Lord who made you and desires to be in communication with you. He wants our hearts broken hearted and all. <laughs> I, would Thanks, never, God. I would never feel you should ever disown your son. Okay, sounds good. But then she quoted no less than seven Bible passages, long passages, because the reciting of passages of people really convinces them, right? Not. Not. (laughs) And then she ended with, I leave your conclusions up to you. Yeah, right. And like, yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm praying for mercy and compassion and God's love and will in your life. In other words, I'm praying that you'll be convinced to agree with me on what... I think God is saying about your life. Right. So that God can approve of you. Yeah. So you had an answer. So I wrote this. (laughs) Dear so-and-so, we have known each other. This is is to your friend. This is to my friend. She's, she's a a listener. Yes. And it's for her to write back to her. Yes. Long time. She asked you to help her with her long time friend. Yeah. So, so this is your, this is what you suggested for her as her response to her long time friend. Yeah. To adjust and do as she needed. But yes. Dear so-and-so, we have known each other many years. We've known each other's hearts. We've shared each other's joys and sorrows. It is from that relationship that I asked you if my family, including my son, would be accepted in your church as Jesus calls us to do as neighbors. Your answer is gutting, to be honest, or it would have been not long ago when I still expected the church to be able to look at the issue with the compassion of Christ and the humility of one seeking to learn. But sadly, I am no longer surprised. 
the church has consistently disappointed in their answers forward approach instead of listening to spirit approach. You are repeating what the church has taught you, repeating verses at me as if I don't know them, as if I didn't wrestle through all the verses when our son came out to us and shattered our understanding of our world and our faith. I am not surprised because that is exactly what the evangelical conservative Catholic whatever church teaches us to correct others without being asked to try to be the Holy Spirit when we, they already have one. And your answer is a faithful read of the church's obsession with correctness, specifically correcting others. Their interpretation of correctness, by the way. Right. Yeah. So, but it is void of Jesus's compassionate understanding that turns the world on its head It is also void of understanding the lived experience of LGBTQ people who have looked at this from every angle and have poured their hearts to God more than you can possibly imagine. It is reductive of their journey as if, after all they've been through, something you have not been through, you still know better. This journey to the very heart of God, has cost our children everything. And your answers lifted from the Bible cost you nothing. Our children have put in their life savings into this journey, and you are playing with Monopoly money. I won't bother to point out the holes in your reasoning because you can't hear me. With your ears so full of church answers, instead of emptied of all that so they can listen for the Holy Spirit. So it would go nowhere. Instead, I challenge you to seek the Holy Spirit about this community, not your religious leaders, who, according to Jesus' words to them, are the least trustworthy to speak for God, see Matthew 23, and not the Bible, which is not the same as Jesus or the Holy Spirit. Keep in mind, it's not, and it's not just the Bible, like there's only one. Just as we talked about this on a recent episode, you know, there are so many versions. Every, the entire right. Bible is cherry picked because it was put together. Right. And different denominations have different Bibles, books left and left. So, in, so right. I just wanted to add that. So, in and, it, and, and it's become our idol now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm sorry. So continue your on idol. with your, your email back to yeah. me. Yeah. So not your own understanding. We know what Proverbs says about that. But the spirit whom Jesus said would lead us in all truth. That's who I encourage you to seek uh, answers from. Or, I want to stop for just a second too here, because yeah. I, I sometimes, as the farther down this road we go, the more I, I understand why the church does what it does sometimes. Yeah. And, the, and when Jesus said, the spirit will lead you in all truth, We've talked about how that the church doesn't like that because it's it's uncontrollable. They don't have any part of it. It cuts them out. That's right. It it, it it cuts them out. So how they can how they answer that, how they combat that, is a misinterpretation of the heart is wicked. We've talked about that. It just right. means the heart is deep. But that you can't trust your heart. It's wicked. Um, and all this, all this, but kind you of, can trust the pastor who is yeah, perfect. All this kind of crap like that, that comes against the, the religious leader in a Christian church actively coming against something that Jesus said. Wow. Right. That, that's what enough a, to, to dress your hands yeah. and walk out of the door and never come back. So you said Jesus would lead us on all truth. And then yes. you continued. Yeah. Or ignore what I said, find reasons why I'm wrong. And stay comfortable in your existing worldview, which is allow, which allows you to be right and large numbers of people you don't know to be wrong. I like to give you the benefit of the doubt on which way you might go, but I have enough experience with Christians not to hold my breath. Thank you. Leaving my conclusions up to me, very generous of you. And I appreciate your prayer for mercy, love, and compassion and God's mercy and will in my life. But you needn't worry. God pours out mercy, love, and compassion in abundance. It is Christians who do not. Mic drop. Mic drop. (laughs) So I just want to say here that this, this, this episode was about you don't need another person's approval. And that, that, 
Yeah. I want you out there, you kind of apply what Susan just wrote for yeah. this lady's answer to anyone in your life. You don't need it's another labyrinth to go after someone's approval for you. It gives them too much power, too much weight. Yeah. And, and it just, it, it just, it's, it's a no win situation. It's not going to go well and you don't need it. You don't need it. Yeah. So that's what you sent your friend and she wrote back. Right. Yeah. And she yep. said, thank you. Well said. I just wish I could stop letting people like this upset me so much. She said, I'm personalizing this and will send, but I expect no response. After all, her husband probably wrote it for her. <laughs> <laughs> He's more able to stick to his rules without being bothered by things like lifelong friendship, heart, or tender feelings. <laughs> Sarcasm? Yes, Sheldon. <laughs> I said, I know. And remember, it's not personal to you. They've been conditioned for years, for a lifetime, to think a certain way. They've been stunned into insensibility. Stunned is the root of the word for st stupor. <laughs> They're in a stupor. And also for the word stupid. They've been put in a stupor, made stupid, stunned, like beamed on the head with a board. Really. It's like sitting with someone with dementia. And I mean no offense to anyone with dementia. It's like sitting with your parent with dementia and they are lucid, and you think, oh, good, they're back. And suddenly they don't remember who you are, and you think, oh, no, they're not okay. Same here, they're not okay. They've been made not okay by controlling religious leaders in their grab for power and money, and they've gotten it. There's nothing you can do about that, but you can stand your own ground and hold on to your own sanity but be assured it is them, not you. You cannot go for their approval any more that you, than you can convince someone with dementia that, to bring them into the present and keep them there. Yeah. You just can't. You just can't. So remember that the church calls people a heretic for years before they finally recognize them as a saint. <laughs> You don't have years to wait for the church to recognize you in a, as a saint. And honestly, who needs it? And also, it's all, also years after you're dead. So <laughs> if we need the church's approval to be validated. Or to anyone's be, approval. Yeah. To be validated, to be seen, a lot of the world will sit in the dark unrecognized. People whom Jesus loves, whom God loves, will be sitting in the dark in tears waiting for approval. Don't wait for approval. You're already approved. Throw that approval onto your shoulders shoulders like a magic love cloak <laughs> and move forward in your life. That's I'm right. serious about that. Yeah. That's right. Let me say that again. You don't need anyone's approval. God has your photo, and it's probably your high school yearbook photo, so it's not even a good one maybe. Your photo on God's fridge. <laughs> yeah. You are all good. Believe that. You don't need anyone's approval. The only person you need approval from is yourself. Yeah. Believe that. Believe yeah. that. And as we said last week, you're not the one who needs to defend anything. Yeah. Not yourself, not your beliefs. You don't need anyone's approval. You are all good. You're on the right side of everything, beloved. You're on yeah. the right side of everything, of history, of Christian scripture, of the Spirit's heart. You, you go and love and be loved unconditionally. The rest just falls into place. That is what you deserve. That's what serves you well. You are beloved. And this, this is yeah. such a deeper place than, well, I don't, I don't need God, then I'm, I'm an atheist now which that's, that's one response, one reaction. But the truer thing is we, we do really want to be in concert, in harmony with God, but How, you already whatever that are, looks like. yeah, whatever, whatever that, that looks, looks like, like for yeah. you, but you already are. And I am more conscious, oh, I've got chills. I'm more conscious of spirit's presence, what I call my 360 guides, because it's God, it's the angels, it's all my guides, their presence around me every minute than I, when I was trying to thrash through 
theology that really didn't make sense. Yeah. That's all available to you. And their ongoing message to you has always been, it's been very deep and very detailed, but there's a, there's a thread. Yes. And that's, breathe, Susan. <laughs> You're all yes. good, baby. You're all good. Get off the treadmill and just you're, breathe in us. You're yes. all good. Yes. So we say that to you, beloved, as well. You're all good. Yes. So next week, we're going to start leading into the holiday season by talking about family. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Two things in particular next week. How we define it and our expectations for it. It's going to be fun. Yeah. We love you. We Talk to you next you. week. Bye. Bye. Would it be okay? If I were to tell you that I am afraid someday, so I call you up and you call me down, would it be okay? You've been listening to the Freed Hearts Podcast. We have extensive resources and vibrant community for you at www.freedhearts.org. Just come say hello. And if you have questions or issues or comments about the podcast, things you'd like us to talk about, reach out to us at podcast at freedhearts.org. Org. The music is provided by Hannah Cottrell, our daughter, the Grammy-nominated Saint Sinner. And you can find out more about her at heystsinner.com. Please share this, subscribe, and follow on your favorite platform. And thanks for listening.